Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have for you a stress free way of uh, doing a painting, and I thought I would share that with you. Um, I have 11 by 15 sheet of paper. Uh, this particular one I think is Canson brand, nothing too fancy. Anyway, so I've got it taped down to a board to keep it from warping as much as possible. And I did pick some colors. Let me show you. I did use that uh, Sarah Renee Clark um, color palette catalog. I'll show you this. Sorry if there's glare. Oh, I've got one light I need to turn out. Um, I'm using 210 uh, out of color catalog volume one and this is kind of what i went with today and i did a little swatching and this is kind of what i came up with i decided uh not to go with this particular shade of purple and uh so let me show you what i did pick here in just a second i also added um, a color to it just because I wanted to, which is this one. So I have Ganzai Tambi is mostly what I have today. Uh, this is the Art Nouveau set. And um, looks like this, that's the lid I did my swatching on. There is those. So this one is Flax Beige. And this purple that I picked is Old Mauve. I have Pea Green and Cobalt Green and I have Shadow Green. Then I picked a couple of Daniel Smith colors. And this one is the Thalo Turquoise, which I have right here. And then I have an Indigo. Um, I'm not terribly sure about that one yet, uh, but we will see, you know, plans change, right? All right. So at least that's what's in my head to start with now. That could be way different by the time we get through. And I've got just a bunch of different size brushes here. I don't know what I'm going to use yet. And then I also like to work with one of these. Uh, pipettes and uh, they just I put water in there just plain water and I'll drop it I like to use this I guess as a way to not um, like say for instance you'll have uh, paint on your brush and you'll need to get a little more water well if you've got paint on your brush you're going to be losing your paint when you dip it back in the water. So I use that little pipette just to get more without losing the paint that's on my brush. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> all right. So what I am thinking today is I'm using this really big piece of paper, but I intend on cutting it down. So I'm just going to paint with whatever comes to mind i'm gonna put some water down first um i am just gonna do whatever i feel like very intuitive and i am not gonna really focus on composition right now and so then we'll go through uh, toward the end and we'll just find our little favorite parts out of there and we'll uh, use like a little frame or a mat like a viewfinder and pick out whatever is our favorite and that way we'll you know it's not stressful because you're not thinking so much about um, let's see which color do I want uh, I'm not thinking so much about composition and stressing out about it. 
uh, just having fun. And then surely out of a big piece of paper, we'll find a little something that we like. Oh, I like to do that. And I've got a piece of um, paper over here that I am kind of cleaning my brush on. All right. See, I don't know that I'm going to work with that big of a brush. I mean, you know what? I am. I am going to start with this phthalo blue, this Daniel Smith. Very pretty color. Love this a bunch. Well, like I said, um, just going to kind of go with the flow, see what happens. Not really thinking about a particular composition here. These are, why did I do that? Um, the brush that I'm kind of working with right now is uh, Princeton Neptune. This one is a size 8. I really like these brushes. So I am really wanting to do like a nice thin wash. I'm going to wind up tearing this paper up. We'll see what she can handle. I'm just really feeling some light washes and then maybe we'll get a little heavier color here and there. See. Even though I've got it taped down, it's starting to buckle. But that it be okay. It's not the end of the world. Now had I uh use cotton paper, 100% cotton paper, that wouldn't be as big of a problem, but I didn't have anything cotton this big. And the nice thing about this, once we cut it up, you know, we can get different sizes, you know, whatever size, you know, maybe we're looking to frame. Um, let me drip some of this down in here. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> I can't walk and talk at the same time. Uh, look at that. Oh, that's going to be pretty. I'm saying something about, oh, then we can also use uh, the leftovers in uh, scrap projects or um, make little greeting cards out of them, little thank you cards, all kinds of good stuff. Let's see, wash some of that out a little bit. And I do wind up getting blooms in my watercolor when I work like this, and that's just part of it. For me, I'm okay with it. Some people don't like that effect, and there's times that you don't want that to happen. But I really like the very soft, kind of ethereal, flowy vibe, and so um, I kind of like it. All right, let's try a little of this brown. This was not in our color palette. I don't think I got my brush clean. Yeah, see, there's more blue. We'll just dilute it out. <laughs> I 
So I like these little uh, palettes because, especially with these Ganza Tambi paints, they're a little on the thicker side. So you can go right out of the pan and get a heavier lay down of color or you can dip out of, you know, water them down in the, um, in the little wells there. See, and I like to do a little bit of both just for variation. Which is great about these paints. So you can use them, you know, more than just one way. I think technically they're like gouache or they're kind of like that. They're got a little piece of fuzz or something. They're a little more um, opaque than just your typical watercolor. I think that came from a brush. That's all right. Okay, let's get a little more up here. I'm trying to remind myself that I'm not working on this as a whole piece. Not that I couldn't. I mean, it was just kind of the point of this is that, uh, you know, it's just kind of a mindless process or more so to do it like this, not thinking of it as one whole finished, you know, piece. Then you don't get stressed out about it. And, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's more fun. <laughs> I am liking it so far. I like these colors together. They got some blooms going in there, some right there, right there. All right, what else? What else? Let's do some purple. Let's see if I still have water in there. Try to work with two water dishes and uh, normally, and I did not uh, get a second one today. Gosh, it's so pretty. I love these colors. Of course, you want to keep in mind, oh, there goes that purple. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Keep in mind, uh, you know, what colors you're using and you know how they're going to mix um, so that's when you want to you know use colors that go together or if you're using you know warm and cool colors together that you let one or the other dry you let layers dry i'm not terribly good about letting my watercolor layers dry very well in between layers I'm really liking those colors really really <laughs> really really This might make some sort of mess. We'll see. So I just try to kind of get like a variation, what much on there, of light color, dark color. That might be kind of mixing with the green.
right, let's take, um, let's see, we used, what did we use? The phthalo and this other green. I don't think that we used this guy. All right, well, I'm borrowing his little well. <laughs> I want to put some of these blues together. These are going to be so pretty. I just love watercolor. I love all kinds of just the water soluble art supplies. It's like, because I just do magic things. You can just get mesmerized watching them flow and blend and play together. It's great. And I really like the fact that you can't really control them. I mean, you know, you can sort of control them, but they can just have a mind of their own and really do fun things. And you just kind of go with it. So I probably need to be careful like around the purple. I could wind up with some unintentional color mixing. I think I intended to leave a little more white space, but I got carried away. <laughs> so let me see. I do, I think I want to add a little more of the darker purple. Oh, look here. Let's fix this. Kind of wash that line out. Just because where this is buckling, it's going to leave like this edge. I'm going to try to hide that a bit. Let me go over that corner a bit. Haven't used this other green. I kind of feel like it might be too much. Might be too much if we do. A little bit darker. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that starting to go. I really like this dry brush stroke that comes from. When you use your brush sideways, kind of dry. Yeah, that's amazing. That looks really good. All right, let's add a little more over here. One more darkness. So you can get darker shades, I think, with these Gansai Tambies than maybe some of the traditional watercolor. See, I don't like that straight line. Let's add 
Maybe a little more here. I don't know. I can hear the sirens now. <laughs> the watercolor police are coming. <laughs> They're coming to get me. Uh, but that's all right. I, I like breaking the rules. Um, yeah, I really shouldn't be doing all this. Probably considered overworking it. But that's just the way I like to work. So I just do what I like to do. And that's what I try to encourage everybody else to do. Is have fun and don't be stressed out about, you know, we're not supposed to do it that way. You do it how you want to do it. All right, let's have a little more of that phalo. All right, I want to add a bit of water. Oh, nice. <laughs> Must have popped a bubble. And I kind of like the way that acted. Let's see what what other kind of ruckus we can start. Let's be troublemakers. Clean my brush here. You could use your pipette to drop water on. See, this is where. The magic happens like it just does its own thing and I love it so much. See, and then you can go through and pull some of that back up. That water. Oh, I love the way that purple ran in the green. It looks good. Let's see if we want to move anything around here. Oh, that's really interesting. Let me run that back up this. Mm. Oh, some of this is really looking good. May kind of flatten some of those little spots out so they're not just huge white circles when it dries. Right. What else? What else? I think I'm gonna let this dry a little bit, and then we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Before this dries completely, I think that I want to get a little more dark color in a couple places. I like, and I'm really struggling with trying not to make this work in a composition on its own yet um so i'm thinking okay well i've got dark green here and here so i need some down here and i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna cut it up so um but i do want like just a bit more of the dark green just because i really like it Uh, 
But there is quite a bit of fun stuff going on in here, which I like. I really don't care for these hard edges. Okay. No. Oh. Maybe a little more down here. And then, let's see. Oh, I wanted to add a little more purple. Because that turned out to be pretty light as well. Let's see here. This has really turned out to be very linear. <laughs> yeah, so you can get like really thick dark colored paint with those these Ganza TMPs. And let me Do like the colors though. So I guess maybe we have we have hope. There's gotta be just a little tiny part of this that we wind up really liking. Right, let me put just a tad more in here. This looks And I'm ready. All right, and then I think I'm going to add some ink tints before we let it dry completely. Let's see, I picked out a couple. Uh, one is deep indigo, the other one is dark purple. I was playing with it on my paper over here, trying to decide. I also was thinking about this aqua marine color, which is beautiful, but I think so much of this is already that color. It's where I might decide to go ahead and put the indigo in from our color palette. I'll use it on this. I'm going to just dunk my pencil in the water. Let's get some scribbly scribbles in here. Ooh. Can't go far with the water on these. Needs to dry. I mean, I need to probably put water down. Kind of cool. Mm. Some little 
scribbles or interest. Do one more little one somewhere. I like the way those look. Very inky. All right, I'm going to try not to mess with it. All right, let's let this dry completely and then we'll come back and do some more fun stuff. All right, it's all dry. And I am, I'm liking it. I really am. I love these colors course they're you know it's super busy but uh we're gonna fix that and look i think this is my favorite part of the whole thing these little blooms in there they look like flowers or something they're just beautiful all right so what are we gonna do what i'm thinking is i'm gonna do a little bit of uh, stenciling but I don't really want any, um, you know, like identifiable shape, I think. I mean, not shape, but, you know, like things, like not flowers or, um, you know, things like that. So I've got this. This is just one of those little Timu stencils. Um, but it's really organic. And... So I think I might use some of that. So I'm probably just going to go in like some of these uh, darker areas with this white. And the reason I'm using gesso instead of paint, at least for this gesso, um, it is uh, a little more... A little thinner it's more translucent than white paint would be and so that way i'll still get some of this color kind of popping through from the from underneath oh that's cute i like that not a big difference on that brown. I'm really feeling like I got some beachy landscape vibes coming out of this. I'm just using this little stencil brush. I've been having good luck with this lately. Normally, I just use like a little sponge, but I've been liking the way this is working. Mm, that looks good. I like it. Right, let me do something in here to kind of break some of this up. And try not to put a big old blob on there. Is that all? Sneak up under that stencil. what that looks like oh that is looking good oops i'm making a mess like that and 
do some fun up here. Since this is so translucent, like you can cover a larger area with it and it not be so like in your face. Like that. Looks good. Hmm. Right after I got through praising that stencil, look, I had some sharp lines. I guess that I had um, a little too much paint. on my brush which i try to kind of wipe it off a little bit What that looks like. Like it. All right, is that enough? I don't know. Okay. I do think that I want to add a little bit of gold to it. I'm not going to go too crazy with the um, with the colors. I'm going to keep it kind of simple. I think. And I've got this gold. Uh, Kiritaki paint, not paint, uh, ink. Uh, you can't read what it says. It's in Japanese, but it's um, in the description, in the video description. And I put it, uh, some of it in here. It's a little squeeze bottle because it's fun. And I like to test it out on something that is uh, not what I'm working on. Okay. And I think I'm just going to add some dots. And let's do some
better quit before I do too much. All right, let's let that dry a minute and then we'll come in with the viewfinder and see if we find anything at all that we like. Okay, all that's dry and see how uh, transparent that gesso dried. So you can still see the colors through it, but it kind of knocked some of that stuff back a little and I think it gave it a bit of interest. So let's um, take our viewfinders here and see if we can find anything we like. I have these just made out of um, cardstock, I think it was. Anyway, I have them in different sizes. Uh, like here's an 8 by 10 I've got 4x4 four because four I have some uh, wood panels that are this size and uh five by seven so i think i would like to get a five by seven out of this if we find anything that looks good and then it crazy how things start to come together after you frame them like to me this right here looks pretty good i like it that coming down here in the corner and you've got three little spots of gold. It looks good. Mm, I don't really like this one as much right up there. I don't really care for that, but that looks pretty good. That's not too bad. That's kind of good. Now this, I like this quite a bit. I think this is, is a keeper. Look, you've got like three um, areas with the gold in it. I really like this. It's kind of landscapey. Reminds me of a beach and some sky and i don't i guess this is water and who knows what that blue uh, that purple is <laughs> i like that i think i'm gonna i think this one is a keeper for sure let's see and then i might keep this one as well i think that looks pretty good let me i'm gonna get a pencil and kind of make some marks so I can mark off uh, what I want. So, go. There, yeah, I think there. Just put a little light mark in the corner there. And go back and erase it. Oh yeah, that's right up against the edge. That's good. All right, what did we decide on this one? The you go right up against the edge of the paper here it does look good but i'm trying to keep the rule of thirds in mind and put things where i think that they'll look the best let's see how far over where was that mark now i lost it there it is so well, that's not too bad. Mm, no, this is my favorite in here. I wonder if there's something I can keep that has that. Oh, I probably should have marked the top of that. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to. It would have to probably be kind of at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like that. 
Sorry, I know I'm making y'all dizzy. I gotta flip that around. Yeah, I don't like that right in the middle there. Like that. But, 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 got that four by four. So, and there's not much in this window, but we can go back with a Posca pen or um, oil pastels or something like that and make some marks, and it would probably look really good. Yeah. All right. Well, I think for sure I'm going to cut out the piece over here and the piece over here. Okay. So I got those cut out. I left a little extra just for framing. And look. Look how that looks. I love it. Looks really good. Um, I did put some uh, paint splatters on there because I was feeling like it was missing something. And I almost feel like it needs just one more little thing. Um, let's see here. Where's the, this one is a little off size. It's not truly a five by seven, but look there. I really, really like how those turned out. But I don't know. Like, do they need just one more little thing? One more? Like, I feel like they could use a little bit of dark, um, well, I don't know. Like some oil pastel dots or something. Oh, y'all, I can't quit messing with it. I need advice. But I was able to get my little blooms in there. I was excited about that. Uh, should we do some spots? Yes. Yes, we should do something. All right, so I've got um, these oil pastels out and ready to go. I'm thinking maybe just something along the lines that, you know, would match that. Let's... Uh, Try that on a piece of paper. Oh, look. It's good to have the scraps left over. We could try it on there. Hmm. All right. All right. I think I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. And... <laughs> if the thumbnail of the picture on the video has spots, then you'll know I couldn't leave it alone. All right, guys. Well, that was pretty, um, pretty easy and non-stressful way to get a couple of paintings out of one big piece of paper. And um, it looks like a series, and you worked really hard to coordinate it, and it really wasn't that hard after all. I hope this was helpful. Thanks guys for hanging out with me and I appreciate all the likes and subscribes and I will catch you on the next one. Bye y'all.